And so that's when we registered the business. We registered it as Monopoly uh, Holdings Limited. What? I love Monopoly. <laughs> Such a what? I mean, Monopoly is, is an <laughs> obvious inference. Yeah. Um, but a week after the, the registration certificate came out, we felt strongly led that that was not to be the name of the business. And we changed uh, the name to Goshen Acquisitions. Now explain to somebody w why that name. So one of my favorite stories, biblical stories, is that of Joseph. Mm. Uh, Joseph, um, if you haven't read the story, please, you know, you have to read it. Joseph was his son's, his father's favorite son, uh, who, because of his brother's jealousy, was sold off to slavery mm. in Egypt and ended up in prison uh, because he wouldn't sleep with his boss's wife. And God gets him out of prison miraculously by giving him interpretation to the Pharaoh's dreams. And he ends up as a second in command to the Pharaoh. In fact, according to Pharaoh, if I remember his words correctly, only with respect to the throne yep. would he be over Joseph. Mm. Otherwise, he had full authority over everything else. Mm. Uh, it says uh, even his boss did not concern with, with himself with anything other than what he ate because <laughs> he handed everything over to, to Joseph. Now, in that story, uh, the, there's an interesting phase of that story which talks about the famous famine, uh, which historically we know covered most of Africa. Mm. Uh, and back then, if you study ancient uh, Egyptian history, Egypt, <coughs> the Egyptian kingdom actually extended all the way down to probably Malawi. Mm. So we're talking about a famine that affected our forefathers, <laughs> ideally, right? And in the story, people would come from all corners of the earth to buy grain from Joseph because he was the only one smart enough to store grain when it was plenteous mm. before the famine. And it says that they exhausted all their cash, then they exchanged all their animals mm. for grain, then there was no more animals. They exchanged all their land, all their title deeds. Mm. Uh, then there was no more land. Then they sold themselves yep. as slaves <laughs> yep. uh, in exchange for food. And uh, Joseph insti inst instituted the land tax. 20% mm. uh, of everything they harvested now belonged to the Pharaoh, since all the land belonged to Pharaoh. Mm. All, but, all but the priests. Yes, except for the priests. Uh, and uh, during the famine, one of the groups that came was Joseph's family. And in the story, when Pharaoh heard about Joseph's family coming, he, it says he was overjoyed for, for Joseph because they believed Joseph had no family. Mm. And Pharaoh instructs that Joseph's family, his dad Jacob and his brothers and the whole clan be given the best of Egypt, uh, which was a land called Goshen, which is in the upper Nile Delta which because of the Nile Delta was not as ravaged by the famine as the rest of the lands. Mm. And, and it's also where Pharaoh kept his personal livestock because mm -hmm. of plenty of fodder. And in fact, he hired two of Joseph's brothers as uh, direct mm. uh, foremen over his personal livestock. Yeah, because these guys were guys of livestock. Yes. And it says that there, uh, Jacob and his household uh, lived in peace, acquired land and property and prospered. And, and so... Goshen acquisitions made sense because it represents what we're about. We're about securing a, a, a wealthy posterity for our children and our children's children. That's why we are so anal about our due diligence because mm. we're not thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about future generations who should have an interrupted and peaceful ownership of the lands we have invested in. Uh, and hopefully over that period of time, they will acquire lands and properties and prosper. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's and where the name comes from. And I, but I also know that the time, hey, that's a story and a half. In fact, I feel like you need to take a sip of water. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I shall. <laughs> Please take that sip of water while I ask the next question. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the way he just rolls off your tongue. First and foremost, it's impressive that you re-registered the business just because of a uh, spiritual inclination. That's nothing small because it's a process to register business. Yeah, well, it if was. Actually, to be honest, it's not a process that hard anymore. Thank God yeah, for no, e-citizen yeah. e e e yeah. and the portal. But then, then it was. It was yeah. In fact, Ranja was pissed off with me because we had waited so long. It finally came out 
And before a week is up, I was telling him we need to change the name. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, and what about Greater Gains? Because it's got a tagline. Greater right? Gains came came up later. Okay, even uh, even even Grand Acres. Yes. Okay, so then we'll get there. Okay. Yeah. So later on, we had a branding uh, audit done by Fadi and the team at Arc Creative, and. Uh, one of the things that came out from the audit was that the name Goshen Acquisitions was a bit ambiguous about what we do. Mm. In fact, I remember several times I'd give people my, my card and they would ask me if I was in mergers and acquisitions. Mm. <laughs> I was a lawyer. Uh, so they felt it was important that we created a sub-brand uh, or change the name. And I wasn't going to change the name because I felt strongly that we were supposed to have that name uh, as a matter of faith. Uh, it means something, it stands for something. So rather than change the name, we created a sub-brand, which is more customer-facing, called Grand Acres. Mm. That's obvious. Yeah. And it's also a play on the same initials, GA, for Goshen Acquisitions. Mm. So there's an obvious association or inference there. Uh, and, and so great, Greater Gains was also a result of that exercise as a tagline that represents our aspirations. You know it's what's about greater, <sighs> the greatest gains. And strategic land investment. Yeah, posterity, building wealth. Uh, strategic land investment was our first tagline mm. for Goshen Acquisitions. It changed to greater gains. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so low. You're so calculated in your things. But then a thing that I'm learning right now, you are doing exactly what you did in States. Flipping. You, you In a sense, yeah. If from the perspective of you didn't have the capital to get the kind of quantities of land that you needed to get. I mean, your initial investment in this company is 150k. Uh, Minus of, I mean, was, you, you, you was, get what I'm saying? It was actually less. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, of the million bobs, only 50,800 shillings was from our pocket. The rest came from the Life Group guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we were able to keep our savings account padded a bit. Okay, for, for what we do as a company, most of our profits, uh, we invest them back in the company uh, because we need to always update our equipment. Uh, but equipment is actually a depreciating asset to have. So we needed to look for some way of investing in something that will actually increase in value over time. And one of the things that we've actually done is invest in land. Uh, because uh, as a land from uh, Solomon, which is actually the truth, that God is making more people, but he's not making any more land. Uh, that means the value on land will keep on increasing. And I think there was even a report released a couple of months ago that actually said land is the best investment somebody can make. So I'm glad that I got to realize this uh, much earlier in life uh, through my interaction with Solomon. And uh, I was able to bust a move and make some investments in, uh, in land. Uh, first investment in land I did was uh, about 10 years ago in Element Titer uh, with a couple of friends of mine. Uh, but, and all the other investments I've been able to make have been through Goshen acquisitions. The first one being in Konza. Uh, it was about uh, five years ago when there was a lot of excitement about Konza. And uh, I was planning to get married uh, to my wife, Gina. And uh, we decided to do something radical. We'd, We'd actually been saving money for our wedding and uh, when it turned out that the wedding was not going to happen that year as we planned, uh, we decided to put the money aside in land uh, because leaving it in the bank account would actually have meant that we actually used it for something else. So we took, it was about 200,000 bob, uh, teamed up with uh, four, three other uh, friends of mine and we actually purchased an acre through from Goshen Acquisitions. Uh, so because we individually we would not have the capacity of actually acquiring a full acre so and because in konza you cannot subdivide legally subdivide land uh, below an acre teamed up with uh, three other guys so each of us got quarters and the title this is in all our names that way we know that nobody can sell the land on and then the other person does not know so that is the first investment that we made with Goshen Acquisitions. 
the second one, oh, by the way, we're making <laughs> the investment in Konza. My wife was not in the country. She was, uh, she was overseas. And when I told her, let's make this investment uh, in Konza, she was like, with who? Who is Solomon? Like, do you even know him well? What, are, what happens if he runs away with the money? I told her, told her chill, babe. This is Solomon. <laughs> and uh, so she didn't get to understand <laughs> who Solomon is until now. I think the following year she came home and actually got to meet him. And when she met him, she was like, oh, so you're the Solomon of the land. And uh, she was excited to meet him uh, and interacting with him. She got to know that. Uh, he's a trustworthy guy. He's a man of his word, which is uh, very powerful. That when he says that something is going to happen, uh, it's going to happen. And if in the rare case that it's, it won't happen, he will actually call you and let you know that, yes, this was supposed to go. Like, maybe like your title deed was to come out in two weeks or three weeks, but there's been, del there's been a delay at the land's office because of one, two, three, and expect it in... Uh, maybe like five weeks as they have uh, said if there's any other change he will let you know and he always does that's the good thing about solomon he communicates through and through like you not be calling him to ask for information he'll be the, the one calling you to give you the information that you need the second investment we made was in nanyuki uh, now when we made the investment in nanyuki we were already married and uh it was great because we actually took a drive to Nanyuki on one weekday morning. We went out, uh, we saw the land, it was beautiful. Uh, views of Mount Kenya, uh, Loldaiga Hills, the Abadeas, we were right next to uh, Old Pejeta Conservancy. I mean, there were, we met a couple of zebras grazing as we were going to the land. We are like, wow, this is a nice place. And Nanyuki is a nice town which... Uh, Anybody who is not keen on the hustle and bustle of Nairobi, it becomes a nice place to, to settle and live. And it's something that we would actually like to do, live and settle in, in Nanyuki. So we went out, we saw the land, uh, Solomon told us uh, what the costs were, and decided, you know what, let's do this. Let's, let's also make an investment here. So we uh, again put our funds together and we were able to make an investment. That was uh, about two, two to three years ago. Uh, right now, the land that we purchased, I believe, has doubled in value. So we'd actually relinquished some uh, uh, investment we had in land elsewhere and actually bought in Nanyuki because Nanyuki had a higher return on, uh, on investment. And uh, it is an investment we don't regret to this day. Uh, and at the moment, we're hoping we can be able to make some more investments uh, with Gosh. Uh, but yes, um, it, it, you know, it follows through, the dots connect. Uh, I, I never imagined it. It's not something I plan to do. I often say today it was a happy accident. Mm. Uh, mistakes have been made. Obviously, there's learning and growing mm. along the way. Uh, but we are grateful to be doing what we're doing. It's our passion. It's one of our callings. Mm. Uh, for sure. Okay, I need to ask this one because I'm trying to understand. You see, now when you did the Imbuku land, you didn't flip it as. You, I don't even want to say flip it. You didn't sell it as fast as. No, we didn't sell. We it was, uh, you know, the couples buying five acres each from Mzeta Pasian's cousin, mm. a gentleman called uh, Metito, Mze um, Metito. Yeah. Um, we. That, w that one, the idea was just to keep mm -hmm. for our kids. Hold for 18 years when your firstborn's going to college, see what it's worth, maybe it'll cover the tuition fees. Long-term land banking, that's always our view. We don't take short-term views on land investments, mm -hmm. ever. And we don't advise our, our customers or any land investor to take on that strategy. If something happens sooner to make it possible to sell for profit soon great but it should not be a strategy because you have no control over what happens in between mm. yeah so mm. if you always play the long game you'll always win but but how do you play the long game and you need to replicate this and pay bills and make money so what happens next after you do the imbuku the first no first so yeah that was from imbuku again I, I purchased in my name on behalf of others we subdivided everyone got their title for five acres that process took long. So that was not a, a money-making exercise. Mm. Uh, so after, after that particular transaction, um, 
uh, I think it was Rose again, if <laughs> Rose instigated a trip to Isiolo to scout for land because Konza went so well, we said maybe this Vision 2030 blueprint is a great way to decide where to invest early. Mm. And at the time they were planning a tourism city in Isiolo, mm. just like a techno city in Konza. Mm. So I'd never been to Isiolo, in fact I'd never been anywhere past Thika uh, at that time. Mm. And I took off on a car ride in my Toyota East, my faithful <laughs> Toyota East uh, with, with Rina Hicks, George Ikenye, my buddy from Houston, and Andrew Ranja, our lawyer. Uh, five in the morning we bounced uh, and of course on the way we had to pass by Nanyuki. I'd never been to Nanyuki and Nanyuki is magical. I hate to use that word but Nanyuki was enchanting. Mm. Uh, there's something about Nanyuki. You feel it the instant you're in it. And then of course we had to go on to Isiolo. We didn't find anything investable there because most of the land was communally owned there was no tradable titles mm. and so and I how did you know this you had conversations with the people on the yeah, ground of course when you're when you're scouting you ask do you have a title no in the title moja a community shamba kubwa mm. ukitaka tutakukatia it's a complicated political process mm. i wasn't interested in that not this early in the game um I needed I needed something I could do due, proper due diligence on, mm. and communal titles you can't do due diligence on. Um, so I I abandoned that plan, but made a mental note to come back to Nanyuki <laughs> and investigate <laughs> further. So I spent three weeks coming back to Nanyuki. Dude, just you're like talking about a two and a half hour drive every that time in the east, maybe three hours. No, yeah, I used to step on it. Eh? One hour, 45 <laughs> minutes, man. Uh, that little thing was quick. Yeah, what was it that about Nyanyuki that had drawn you? About Kenya, the air. The, the fresh the air, my goodness. The views of Mount Kenya, just like in Buko, with the views of Mount Kilimanjaro. And you know, that actually became one of our key investment strategies. Unique geographic propositions. Mm. Because no matter what happens in the neighborhood in the long term, the mountain views are not for everyone. Yes. If you're not located within a certain radius, you don't have the mountain views. Mm. And those will always be desirable over and above whatever is happening or not happening. So I always tell people, if you're going to buy land for the long term, make sure you have that as one of your key checks. Mm. Unique geography. Something that only God made and man cannot replicate. Nice. Because that guarantees desirability yep. in the long term. Just like water frontages on the lake or mm. the beach or cliff cliff sites on the Rift Valley uh, in Kilifi. Mm. You have the cliff and the water at the same time. Those you can't manufacture. Okay. Man, I need to ask this solo. Now, you're going to Nyanyuki. The thing about Nyanyuki as compared to Kajado, Mbuko, that side, Konza, you're now speaking with, um, how do I put this in a politically correct way? The colonials, a lot of the land there is, is not owned by the natives. In Nanyuki. In, in Nanyuki, or in Laikipia County. Yes, in Laikipia. So yeah. now you're beginning to deal with a whole different people. Explain to me the challenges now or the process of acquiring land in Nyanyuki. 